This is Jimmy Cabs taped the broadcast of 5150 interview series yeah. in Bulldozer Magazine. Bulldozer, baby. 2015, but way back in 1985, I took the RTD bus to a theater in South Central Los Angeles Damn. called the Balboa. Balboa Theater, baby. At the height, at the height here in Los Angeles of the Crips Blood War. We're at right the, in the middle of it. At that theater, I encountered a band that I had heard about for a couple of years. I think he started in 80, 81? 83. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to introduce you right now, but I got to tell you this story. As we got off the bus, we encountered real Crip gang members, not <laughs> from the movies. Yeah. And surprisingly, we were cool. <laughs> we were okay. And then we encountered suicidals from Venice, and we were somewhat okay. And then we saw a band called Beowulf. And that pit was raging, and we were not okay. Hey, man. Dale Henderson from Beowulf, how are you? I'm doing great, man. It's good to see you, Jim. Uh, those days were a mess. Those, those days are, are crazy. Nuts. What was wrong with us? Are we crazy or what? We are crazy. But we, we made it. It's 2015. Yeah, we're not me, in prison. We're not dead. Let me ask you this before we get to the professional interview. It was at the height of the Crip Blood War. And here, here are you guys... Anglos and Chicanos from Venice, fully pachuco choloed out. I'm, I'm from in El Cerrito. I'm, I'm talking, they were like down. Yes. Did you guys get in any shit over there? Always. Yeah, right? We always did, but we always made it out. We kept it cool. We, you know, you know how to act in certain areas. So there were some idiots who got their ass beat because they were stupid. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we all made it out. We're still here today, 2015, like you said, baby. Beowulf. This is interesting. There's many bands in Los Angeles that come out from the underground that are way ahead of their time. They're very pivotal and they do things as they create music way ahead of their time. I think your band was one of those. You were the Venice. I don't like to use the word crossover, but you guys were like the Venice Motorhead heaviness of that time. Uh, I agree with you. I mean, Motorhead was obviously one of my main influences along with GBH. And uh, we just kind of took both, both uh, genres and made it what we were, you know. But you combined it in a way. Everyone at that time was crossing over and doing the whole, you know, super fast. You combined it in a way where not only was your music street credible, real world credible, but it was still heavy as fuck. But it had the rawness of punk rock, man. Well, that's what that's what we were, man. Every Bad Wolf song you listen to is real life stories. They happened. They were actual facts. We're not making it up to be some hardcore. Oh, we're crazy. We're freaking OGs. We were OGs. We were crazy. And all that shit that you hear on the Bell records actually happened. Now, this is interesting for me. When you were writing at that time, and that time before the big money came in, there was a lot of. I've never seen that. I'm still waiting for that. That's all I was going to ask you. Does it bother you? <laughs> Does it bother you that there's so many artists that are making the money now that were influenced by your music back then? Don't bother me. I don't hate. I, I, I write from here. I don't write from here or from my wallet. Because that does if you do, if that's what you go into music for, stop now and go, go to ITT Tech. <laughs> okay? <laughs> because it ain't going to happen. You, you got to write from your heart. And you got to write from real life experiences. No doubt. And uh, if you don't write that way, then... Then forget it, you know, stop. Listen to bands that do that, yeah. that have been there and do that. I don't hate on no one. Do you think that's the reason why your music is still relevant now, almost three decades later? It, it could be a facet of that, but uh, uh, I, to me, I, I don't look at, at the uh, who who's liking the music or what makes me relevant. What makes me relevant is I write. And I write because I want to write and I need to write to get these experiences out of me, you know what I mean? Because I've been through them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've been through some hardcore shit. But my, there's a, there's a blessing that I've never been to prison or hooked on drugs. And uh, I think the music had a lot to do with it. My outlet of of everything that was in me and that I experienced, I get, I get to put it out musically and lyrically. So, so that, that, that was my drug. Yeah. That was my prison. That was your high? Yeah. One of the things that I've always appreciated about bands like yours and Budweiser. 
One of the things that I've always appreciated about bands like yourselves, and this is where we're going to really get to know each other very well, we both come from real world neighborhoods here in Los Angeles. Back in the day when it, okay, you know, it's it's still LA, it's still crazy, but back in the day, it was very crazy. Amen. You're in, you're in Venice, I'm in East LA. The point is, is that I resonated and I really, really bonded what you were writing because it really touched base on what was going on all over the neighborhoods. Right. It was. Here you are back 2015, we're older, we're grayer. I, I like to say I'm a little more mellower, but sometimes I get a little riled up. How are you doing your music back then with the way we are now? Because, dude, my back is fucking killing me now. Oh, my, my body's a wreck, dog. <laughs> I just bypass it. Mind over matter, baby. Is that what he really is? Oh, I'll take another one. Thank you very much, sir. Is that uh, what it is? It's what? mind over matter. I mean, yeah, my body may be 50 years old. And it feels like 50 years old, but my heart and my soul say I'm still fucking 20, dog. I'm ready to go. Is that why these kids are into your music now? Um, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know why they're into it. Probably because there's so much junk out there that they're they're hungry to hear Starting. real music. They're Starting. hungry to hear real music, man. This is real music. What we do here: Excel, Beowulf, Lucidal, Hyrax. Tonight, we we were there back in the day doing it when it was real, when we were kids. And that's what we were going through when we were kids, man. And uh, the streets were different back then than they are now. I mean, Venice, I don't know if you know what's going on with Venice. No, I'm sure it's going on like with the rest of Los Angeles, it's right? It's turning into a big fucking yuppie fucking transplant fucking haven, which I, I don't even go to the beach anymore because I can't stand it. But we're, we're, we're still the heart of it. Yeah. We were part of it back then, and we watched it. You know, we were there when it was a hot pot, man. Yeah, man. I mean, you, you couldn't go down the street at at 1030 at night by Oakwood Park and not get fucked with by the police, by the Crips, or by the V13. And now you got people walking down there with yoga mats and poodles <laughs> at 1030 at night. White kids are, oh, oh, my gosh. Like, I, I don't understand it, but, I mean, that's, like you said, gentrification, whatever it's called. But we're still there. You can't get us out. They try to push us out, but you're not, you'll never get rid of us until we die. Then, then you can get away with it.